The reason that we're alive on Earth is because Earth has a magnetic field. Now, because of that magnetic field, we have something called a magnetosphere, which protects us from harmful space radiation in the form especially of cosmic rays that are generated directly from our sun and other areas in the universe. Now, because of this magnetosphere or magneto sheath, the earth is protected from this dangerous radiation and that's why we have life on earth and stable temperatures. Now, back in university, I was taught that the magnetic field on Earth can shift, and these are called magnetic reversals. They happen around every 400,000 years, and we have data on them going all the way back to the Jurassic during the time of the dinosaurs. And this is using, well, simple magnets and me measuring the magnetism of rocks relative to the position of the current magnetic poles on Earth. And you can see that the most recent data is the highest resolution. And that is of the Paleogene through the Neogene. And the most recent data has even more high resolution. Now the last actual magnetic flip, meaning the North and the South Pole switch position, that was about 780,000 years ago, back here at the Brunes Matayama magnetic shift or magnetic pole flip. And this is actually when the North and South Pole change position and currently reside where they do today, where North is North and South is South. But prior to 780,000 years ago, it was opposite. That's pretty mind-blowing. But what we want to bring your attention to on this graph is the fact that in the last 780,000 years, We've had multiple changes in the VADM. That's simply the virtual axial dipole moment. That's what that stands for. And that is the general paleo intensity of our magnetosphere. Sometimes it drops low. And it's dropped low one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or more times in the last 780,000 years. So it drops low about every 100,000 years. Now during these magnetic excursions, that's the proper term, they're not magnetic reversals, they're simply excursions from high field strength. During these magnetic excursions, well, bad things happen on Earth. Specifically, mass extinction events, and also good things, instantaneous speciation, which Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould referred to as punctuated equilibria. And what happens is that because of the changing dipole moment or the magnetic field strength, more cosmic rays come into Earth, and certain species can't handle it, while new species emerge out of nothing. This is how evolution, quote unquote, happens on Earth. And we have a high resolution data set to show this paleo intensity through time, specifically in the last 800,000 years since the last magnetic reversal, which is the Brunus Matayama, which you can see here, the VADM falls almost to zero. The vault the axial dipole moment almost went to zero and bad things happened. There was a huge mass extinction here. Again, another one happening around 690,000 years ago. Again, the La Palma, the big lost. The Calabrian Ridge mass extinction. The Jamaica Pringle Falls mass extinction. The Blake mass extinction. The Le Champ mass extinction where Neanderthals went extinct. And now we are dropping back down again into the next magnetic excursion that could lead to mass extinction. Now, according to the mainstream media, well, they're all over the place, and it's nothing but disinformation central. And here we can see a headline, Earth's magnetic poles may flip, but not yet. Another says, rapid changes we're seeing with the Earth's magnetic field 
don't mean the poles are about to flip. This is normal. Well, it is normal that magnetic fields fluctuate. Here you can just see the last 10,000 years, and they do fluctuate. But it's not normal for them to drop below a dipole moment of, let's say, 5, which is below this graph. And based on the angle we're currently moving at, we're about to hit that trajectory really soon. And some headlines saying that a new study argues that Earth's magnetic poles are unlikely to flip. Well, of course they're unlikely to flip. We just showed you that. What they're likely to do is to reduce below a dipole moment of four here and cause a mass extinction. They very infrequently drop low enough for a full magnetic reversal. And why the term magnetic excursion isn't more prevalent in the nomenclature is beyond me because magnetic excursions are what drive speciation or evolution, whatever you want to call it, on our planet. And we're entering into one of those dips once again. So no matter what the media says, that the poles are unlikely to flip, that's true, but that doesn't matter. Because when the Earth's magnetic poles even approach a flip, which is called an excursion, it would unleash chaos for future humans. And new studies point out that Earth's magnetic field flips much more frequently than we thought. How about them apples? Not only that, Earth's magnetic field may change faster. So it changes faster and more frequently than we thought. I thought the science was settled. Now we're going to link you links to some of these papers for free. Extreme rapid directional change during the modern... Matayuma Brunus geomagnetic polar reversal, and Earth's magnetic field can change 10 times faster than previously thought. Now, this should be front page news for all the mainstream media. If they knew we were in a magnetic excursion and they knew the implications, this is much more important than the fake green agenda narrative of climate change and the fake notion that sea level is going to rapidly rise when it hasn't or that we're all going to burn up. This one is a little bit more pressing. As the magnetic field, the magnetosphere of Earth weakens, dangerous cosmic rays enter and travel through you and all other living animals, plants, and organisms on Earth, and they wreak havoc on the systems. Now, the most important paper, in my opinion, in the last decade is the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals. And we've covered this at great depth on this channel. But we must bring it up again. Because biological evolution is influenced by ultraviolet radiation reaching Earth's surface. Despite the imprecise knowledge of the timing of both UVR flux and evolutionary events, the past strength of Earth's dipole field has provided us a proxy for this UVR flux. And, well, it, the evidence is damning. Here we're looking at that relative paleo intensity called the axial dipole moment. And this is over the last 300,000 years where we've had m multiple mass extinctions all depicted in the yellow lines. And these are also referred to as magnetic excursions. Not magnetic reversals. But magnetic excursions happen with regular periodicity. About every 20 or 30,000 years. And the last big one was the Le Champ. And that caused the extinction of the Neanderthals. Which brings us to this graph. This graph is so revolutionary that it shows before your very eyes the direct link between the geomagnetic field intensity or the VADM, that axial dipole moment, 
and the extinction events that paleoclimatologists like myself have known about but are unable to make the connection because of the separation between the sciences in the field these days. Back when I was at university, the fields were still multidisciplinary and we discussed every day, but that's changed. And what we can glean from this simply by looking at Homo neanderthalensis here, it's short period of time on Earth, that the extinction occurred during one of the biggest drop downs in geomagnetic field intensity. Very telling. And that would in fact be the Lechamp magnetic excursion right around 42,000 years ago. The end of the Neanderthals and the explosion of Cro-Magnon. Now we also have the extinction of many more megafauna here. All going extinct right around the time of Neanderthal and new species arising like the bison or other new species like a new type of mammoth. So there's a direct link between geomagnetic field intensity and the largest drop in that intensity and the extinction of megafauna and Neanderthal. And here's a close-up of that dip down in the axial dipole moment. Overlain with species that went extinct, that emerged and went extinct in a short period of time during these huge magnetic field fluctuations. Dozens of species came and went as the field varied. And Neanderthals ended after this big shift. This big shift did them in. Too many cosmic rays. Too much dung fungi. And then we look at the big picture. In the evolutionary history of Homo sapiens, we can see a direct link between the geomagnetic field intensity and all the changes in Homo species. The history of Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, Denisovians, all emerge at times of geomagnetic low field intensity. The expansion of anatomically modern Homo sapiens occurred during the Blake magnetic excursion A. And you can see that the Lechamp caused literally an explosion of the Homo species across Earth, where up to seven species were prevalent right after the Lechamp magnetic excursion. Now, a lot of this has been buried for good reason because the mainstream and the money funders and the powers that be do not want this information to get out because that event is now occurring now and it would create havoc among the masses. But good scientists knew it was occurring as early as 2016. And I found this paper, Continuous Millennial Decrease of Earth's Magnetic Axial Dipole. And in the abstract, in the first few sentences, it states, Since the establishment of direct estimations of Earth's magnetic field intensity in the first half of the 19th century, a continuous decay of the axial dipole component has been observed and variously speculated to be linked to an imminent reversal of the geomagnetic field. Furthermore, indirect estimations from anthropologically made materials and volcanic derivatives suggest that this decrease began significantly earlier than direct measurements have been available. Now what that means, that means very bad things, that the next mass extinction is occurring now. And as our magnetic field wanes and the excursion continues, 
Things are going to get crazy here on the surface. More cosmic rays, more UVA, B, and C changing the way biology reacts and survives. And some things will die off and new things will emerge. And this is a time that we will all witness this. It happens in just a lifetime. And the big shift in the field began in 1859 after the Carrington event. And so it's been going on now for over, well over 100 years. The entire event could take less than 300. So we're right in the thick of things. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. So buckle up. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You can survive and thrive in these times if you have supplies to survive and thrive without the money funders, without the stores. You need long-term food storage. You need to be growing your own food. You need to have your own livestock. Learn how to fish, wild harvest, and hunt. And be smart. Protect your resources. And be a hero and share this video. More to come. We love you. And that's a boom. Thank mm -hmm.